All right, people, it's time for my favorite activity, which is riding meat. Who's ready to ride some meat? We're gonna talk about this video today from my friends at Neopunk FM, the biggest meat riders in metal. And if you are not familiar with what meat riding is, um, meat is another word for your wiener. And someone who is a wiener rider is, uh, you know, I guess, I guess you could call it a fanboy or a stan. The kind of people that like go a little bit too hard to defend strangers, you know, the kind of person that'll tell you, that'll confront you and punish you in line at a show or venue, something like that, will berate you to tell you why you have to like this band. Like, bro, please acknowledge Glassjaw, bro. Please, they're so influential. You don't understand, bro. I have to tell you about Glassjaw. And I'm like, oh my God, this, this is a long line. It's going to be a tough night. So we'll see what they have to say. Who are the biggest meat riders in metal? And by meat riders, I mean wiener riders, aka stands or annoying fanboys. Let's check it out. If there's one thing metalheads know how to do, it's express to everyone in their immediate surroundings that they're better than other people based off of what bands they like. Yeah, of course. I mean, because that's the whole well, point of metal, of right? Is like letting everyone know that you like the same 15 entry level bands from 1988 as everyone else and like acting like you're special because you like ride the lightning. I listen to the same entry level stuff as absolutely everybody else on the internet. Where's my trophy? That's metal fans in a nutshell, I think. I'd meet ride Tim Henson. All I, I would too, I'm not afraid to say it. Extra mile to gloat about how much better their bands are than everyone else's. But which metal band has the most fans like this? Mm. Today, we're going to be ranking which okay. metal band has the most meat riders in their fan base using a tournament bracket. This is okay. the third part of our five part series where we'll be covering- Okay, so it's a tournament. I like it. I like the format. Let's see who the winner is. All right, so we have our 16 okay. riding metal finalists. I mean, we're already off to a good start. They've called turnstile metal. You know, they're not really metal guys. So I'm unsure if they called turnstile metal as a troll or if they actually think turnstile is metal. Either way, I'm here for it. I love it. We're off to a great start. And it's organized from top to bottom, from newest new head fan base down to oldest old head fan okay. base at the bottom. Oh, wow. Okay, listen, I have two hate breed tattoos, so I am personally offended that you've put them on the same old head level as Megadeth. Megadeth was a band for like 15 years before hate breed even existed, okay? God, guys. Ugh! How dare you call me a meat rider? And the purpose of doing that is so that the this is all screamo. Are watching That's right. This, they're wanting to it's watch all the old head bands. And so if we put those at the end, they're going to fall asleep before we make it there. Yes. And therefore, we'll accidentally binge watch the next mm. 10 of our videos, which Good point. Are, is going to help us in the algorithm. Yep. All right. So first off, Turnstile versus Knocked. Okay. Both very Turnstile is my favorite metal band. Who's, who's with me? Who else thinks Turnstile is the best metal band in the world? It's really into hardcore or just over the age of 30, I suppose. Knocked Loose honestly isn't that controversial because they still sound really hardcore. If anything, they're just getting heavier with their sound. With now, my opinion on this is Turnstile for sure has more meat riders. Like people like Knocked Loose, but Turnstile is like a meat rider band. Like people don't really dick ride Knock Loose. They just like them, but people dick ride Turnstile real hard. That's my opinion. All the new music they're releasing, but their fans are like these Zoomers that found hardcore through TikTok, and yeah. and, and they do the That's whole okay. like, oh god, I'm gonna go crazy in the pit. I'm gonna go crazy. I'm on hinge. I go, oh, I'm gonna kill someone in the pit. I wanna go. It's almost like they meet ride the whole culture behind hardcore to hide the fact that they are new gens. However, with Turnstile, on the other hand, their yeah. fans have this sort of persecution complex where they're already like prepared at a moment's notice to defend the band against old heads or. Or really just anyone that doesn't care for them. The old heads, um, you know, I'm in a uh, 90s hardcore Facebook group. And uh, the old heads are definitely triggered by Turnstile. I think they don't really care that much about Knocked Loose. But they are definitely triggered by Turnstile. You know, it's always like, oh, Turnstile's not even hardcore. Let alone metal. And that spirit that they have, I think it makes them worse than Knocked Loose fans. Extra mile that Turnstile fans have to go through. At a moment's notice, they are ready to say, well, you know what? It's crazy that people are gatekeeping this band. You know, like, they shouldn't gate. No, 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 just because, you know, bands change their sound all the time. They, they've been in the scene for like 10 years. They paid their dues, da, da, da. He's easy. I, I just said I didn't love the album. When it comes to uh, Knock Loose versus Turnstile, Turnstile fans definitely ride way harder. And they're talking about it in the context of Zoomers, but I'm thinking of it as like 32-year-olds with a receding hairline that drive a Subaru and send their kids to Montessori school 
that have been out of touch with hardcore for a long time. I feel like that's a whole other subset of turnstile meat riders. Style, uh, you're bigger meat riders than not. Loose okay, fans. so Bad we agree on that. Versus Bad Omens Oh my god, this is going to be a tough one. Bad Omens versus Sleep Token. Oh my god, I, I gotta see what they have to say about this. I think Sleep Token needs to fucking win this whole thing. I have not encountered, like, the only band I can think of with more Meat Riders than Sleep Token is probably Dance Gavin Dance, and that's died off quite a bit in the past couple years. So Bad Omens, I think, has a lot of, like, fangirls. But that's a little bit different than a meat rider to me. I feel like a meat rider by definition has to be a dude. I don't feel like dudes stand for bad omens like they do sleep token, but oh my god. Sleep token fans, insufferable. Sleep token. My little news and culture bubble that I exist in and honestly doesn't have that much metal related stuff in it. And and I God keep bless it like you, I'm jealous. Reason, you know? But recently more and <laughs> keep it that way for a reason. I wish I did too. More sleep token fans have been like penetrating my bubble. They keep penetrating my bubble. And it's because their fans really want you to know like how dynamic they right. are. How they're right. able to have all these different sounds. Oh, oh look, they're heavy one second. Now, now uh -huh. they have like, this crazy like dissonant riff. And now it sounds like- Oh, wow. Well, that's crazy. Wow. There's loud parts and there's quiet parts. Incredible. Nobody's ever done that before. Catchy, poppy kind of song. And you know, yada, yada, yada. I don't really care, but they keep talking yeah. my ear off about it. Bad Omens has only penetrated yeah. my bubble once in the past year, so I don't I don't have- I, I would penetrate his bubble. He seems like a cool guy. I would penetrate his bubble. I would. I know out of the few Bad Omens people that we probably met, it's usually a Bad Omen that somebody likes <laughs> Bad Omens. With Sleep Token fans, whether it's younger or newer, there's no difference when it comes to the amount of pussy that they're getting, which is pretty much zero. Goose zero. Goose yeah. egg, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, so in terms Yeah, so I, I feel like Bad Omens is a fangirl band, which I view as different than a Meat Rider band. So to me, Sleep Token is the clear winner here. Let's see what they have to say. So in terms of the actual Meat Riding that's going on, well, like, they will not hop off off Sleep Token's John Dory's, no. you know, collectively. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go with Sleep Token here. Okay, token, so far, we're on the same page. The now bring me- Okay, bring me the horizon and Origami Angel. Well, this is a tough one because both of these bands have meat riders, but I mean, Bring the horizon is, I don't know, probably a hundred times bigger than Origami Angel. So I feel like it's kind of apples and oranges. I'll see where they head with this. I, I feel like you can't even really compare these two. The horizon and Origami Angel. I'm going to have to go off on this one real quick. Go off. <clears throat> Go off, okay, son. To be honest, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm gonna go with Horizon on this one right off the rip. I, okay. I, th I think we both know why. It's that whole aging millennial nostalgia pop. Ugh, yeah, the emo night people. Punk emo yes. thing. I know they're not pop punk. I don't. I know it's Close not enough. technically that. They, they, they do like the British guys streaming over like synthy beeps and boops thing. Origami Angel fans are more annoying. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Their their fans are very annoying. I, I just. It's just apples and oranges to me. You know, that's like comparing Linkin Park and like a local band. You know what I mean? But look, if you're on the lineup to to when we were young, you're a part of that scene. And you know what I mean by, by that scene. You know, the, the like Warped Tour-ish emo. The elder, you know? yeah. <laughs> uh, the elder emos. That's what people will collectively remember you as. Yeah, no, no matter what they do at this point. It's really less of a scene, more of like a probably billion dollars. Yeah, I agree with this. For me, meat writing revolves around niche bands that don't really impact the wider world for most people. I agree with that. So it's kind of like you can't really meat ride Bring Me the Horizon because they're, they're too popular for that, I think. That's how I see it. I see their point here, but yeah, you can't meet right a band that's that popular, I think. Dollar, like nostalgia industry where, where these big wigs, they're just like milking these poor millennials. Yeah. Out of all their money. <laughs> there, there is and they're like happy for it. They're happy to be milked. You're like a boomer that like buys gold because you saw an ad on Fox News. You're like an old person buying timeshares thinking you're investing. Or you're buying tickets to Sick New World and When We Were Young. Just whoever the promoters of Sick New World and When We Were Young are, just laughing all the way to the fucking bank because all they have to do is book every washed up band full of fucking 45 year olds, put them all in the same bill, and elder emos will pay hundreds of dollars and travel across the fucking planet to throw their money at these things. Laughing all the way to the bank. With real estate, or you're, you're like a crypto gambling addict. There is Bugman and Elder Emos, they are the same people, yes. To get you to get to depart from their cash 
like a nostalgic millennial that wants to go back to yep. middle school. Why they want to go back to middle school, I don't know. They were getting beat up for listening to this music. But the why doesn't really matter. They're nostalgic for it. And because of that, Horizon has a super high meat rider per capita rating. Origami <laughs> Angel. Yeah, th see, that's you got to normalize this on a meat rider per capita basis. Origami Angel is a, a tiny band compared to Premium Horizon, but... Bring Me the Horizon has a lot of fans that are just sort of normal people that just like their music. Whereas I feel like Origami Angel, if you know who they are, you're probably a meat rider. So I feel like Origami Angel has a higher number of meat riders per capita. Well, eh, they call themselves Gami Gang. That's kind of cringe. That's kind of like low key riding. It's very material. cringe. They got the fans that are like hoodie over the head yeah. all, uh, at all times. Yeah, you know, going crazy. When, when they, they stay in the corner with their hoodie up at the show. It's it's not that big of a deal. You know, they, they come into the pit. They go crazy. You know, it's not like a meat riding activity. At worst, they're kind of cringe sometimes. It's like, dude, why are you wearing that hoodie? It's like 95 degrees. Yeah, I mean, my answer is obvious here. I'm not. Okay. I, I'm not even well, gonna let you say anything. I'm I'm so locked in right I, now. I think we disagree on that one, but I we I I can respect it. Oh, next up, Lorna sure and gojira for sure it's gojira for sure like we'll see what they have to say i i under, i feel like they're gonna go with lorna shore and and i feel like that's valid but to me lorna shore has fans but gojira has the most like irritating boomer meat riders let's see what they have to say about it horizon and also by the way this video is sponsored by us our merch which you can get at neopunkfm.com buy so some merch buy some neopunk lorna fm merch shore people versus gojira now, I don't know if anyone else has had a similar experience before, but there's this one Target, this one, you know, supermarket Target I go to. And okay. every single person I'm a fan of Target. shops there is like a young alt person, like with the piercings, the dyed mm. hair, whatever. I have no explanation for why this is the case, right? There's no other part of town that's like this. It's just this one Target. Every we see a lot of, uh, at our Target, and the town we live in is a lot of military people. At our Target, there's a lot of moms, like 30-year-old moms with like hand tattoos. It's kind of weird. And they're not like junky losers or something like that. They're like, you know, decent looking, like well-dressed, like moms that look fairly normal, other than the fact that a lot of them have hand tattoos. It's weird. I feel like they're like alternative military people. It's an interesting... Uh, Interesting dynamic. When they're like wears obscure band tees and they have the septum piercings, the dyed hair, it's totally inexplainable to me, right? Hmm. Just the other okay. day I was there, I saw a person wearing a Gojira shirt there. Now I'm not saying Gojira is like obscure or, or anything, but unless you're at a show, you don't really see a lot of people walking yeah. around wearing Gojira shirts. But yeah, that being said, my answer is Lorna Shore. Okay. Okay, Lincoln Park versus <laughs> No explanation, you know, all right, well, listen, these guys know their stuff. I feel like maybe where the difference between me and them is that I think they are sort of looking at this through the lens of like Gen Z TikTok people. And I'm looking at it through the lens of like millennial Instagram people. That's how I look at it. But, you know, I guess different strokes, for different folks. We're talking about what you said earlier, yeah. that real cash grab, nostalgia. Lincoln <laughs> Park is dangerously close to being grouped in with the Bring Me the yeah. Horizon, you know, for, for the, for the yeah. same. Uh, Lincoln Park and Polyphia, again, you kind of can't compare these two, but on a meat riders per capita basis, for sure it's Polyphia. Because there's tons of people that love Lincoln Park, just like their music and, you know, don't ride their meat. But Polyphia, a much larger percentage of Polyphia fans are meat riders. I would go with Polyphia easily here like nostalgia reasons however polyphia is like one of these really technical bands and any technical band that's like really into like scales and whatever yeah and so because polyphia is a technical yeah. band they are going to like attract a certain type of person that that um autistic virgins i think is what you're talking about <laughs> the specific type of person really cares about that and what will not shut up about scales and pedals and like oh what model of like this thing do you have and a bunch of stuff that i really don't care about i just want to know if the music's good or not but they don't even it get is to good that polyphia is good if, if like the music's good or right. not because they're so hung up on the pedals and that's the funny part is like they don't even talk about polyphia's music being good they just talk about how good they are at playing their instruments and like their tone and stuff like that and you're like do you even listen to the music do you even care <laughs> or do you just want to like hump their guitars polyphia is pretty much like the poster child yeah or like that type of dude yeah so for that reason polyphia polyphia yeah. you have the bigger yeah. meat riders compared to lincoln park yeah all right ramstein and well i mean listen ramstein fans are incredibly irritating but it's got to be tool i mean tool and sleep token 
Better be in the finals on this bitch. If it's any two bands other than that, I'm throwing my fucking computer out the window. Look, I'll be honest with you here. Uh, we all know the Tool memes about Tool meat riders, you know, into DMT, into Alex Gray drawings of DMT uh -huh. monsters, into the Fibonacci sequence, into creating yep. time signatures. With Rammstein, there's an air of silliness. There's an air of taking itself not too seriously. When they want to go dark, they do a- Well, the thing with Rammstein is you're dealing with European personality disorder here epd it's a tragic affliction that has sadly claimed the uh the the sanity of an entire continent they can't help it people i'm just saying instead of hating them let's try to find a cure okay people let's try to find a cure for european personality disorder I i'm skeptical that one exists but we can never rest until we find it. A really excellent job. The kind of Rammstein meat riders, and maybe this is just because I live in America. If you live somewhere like in Europe or Germany or somewhere else where they're big, let us know. From what, in my own experience, even though we have diehard Rammstein fans here in the US, the amount of tool meat riding that we've seen, whether it's through mm -hmm. high school or college or just in general, like being online, has been way more intense yeah. than Rammstein. Tool really has an unfair advantage here, considering they are like the death grips of metal. Um, I will not be- <laughs> The death grips of metal. Sleep Token, man. Sleep Token has given them a run for their money. I feel like on a per capita basis, Sleep Token has more meat riders, but let's, let's, we'll see if they make it to the finals. Explain that any further, you either get that or you don't. And, and so they're, they're definitely going to beat, uh, uh, you know, Ramstein here. And, um, yeah. there, there's an S, yeah. it's not an SH, so it's Ramstein. But yeah, Tool is the winner. God forbid you don't say the name of the band like a native German speaker, because someone will fucking correct you. Actually, oh, I couldn't... St I tried to watch this video, but I was so distracted by your horrible American pronunciation of Rammstein that I couldn't even finish. Next up, Slipknot and Avenged Sevenfold. Okay, Slipknot and Avenged Sevenfold. I'm going to go with Slipknot. Um, Avenged Sevenfold, they have fans, but I don't think that they have meat riders. Slipknot fans can be kind of insufferable. I don't really think Avenged Sevenfold fans are like that, which they should be, because Avenged Sevenfold is great and amazing and underrated. One of the best bands of all time. But I'm going to go with Slipknot on this one. Let's see what they have to say. With Slipknot, there's, there's a very clear, visible presence of meat riding. They have knot fest. They knot have fest, people yeah. who go in with the masks. Mm -hmm. And they have people yep. coming in the yep. jumpsuits. And they have people yep. who have Slipknot tattoos. Even just on a surface yep. level, when people think back to, like, that mall goth time, mm -hmm. like, Slipknot is, like, the first thing aesthetically and sonically that probably pops in a lot yeah. of people's heads. Avenged Sevenfold, I'm imagining the kind of kid who would uh, do, like, the five-finger challenge with the knife. Right, right. That's basically his favorite band. I definitely I feel like Avenged Sevenfold fans uh, fall into one of two categories now. Number one is sort of the military wife, sort of alternative redneck, butt rock sort of person. Bucket number two is like guitar dorks. Um, either way, Avenged Sevenfold also has never taken themselves seriously at all. And I think that really helps them to avoid the meat riding. I definitely think the Slipknot meat rider, they definitely have a higher IQ, without a doubt, yeah. than the Avenged Sevenfold fan. And I think yep. Slipknot has also culturally had a bigger impact. Therefore, they're yes. generating more meat riders per yeah, capita. Exactly. The other And just the new metal factor. I mean, listen, I think Slipknot's a great band, but the fact that there's so many people now who take the evil clown band so seriously is wild to me wild like you're meat riding for the evil clown band that gets up on stage and bangs on trash cans really that's like this is the pinnacle of culture to you all right listen okay <laughs> listen i'm not here to judge but 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 i'm judging the other night i went to new metal night mm. and there was a guy there in a full slipknot cosplay like he was wearing the dickies <sighs> jumpsuit and he was wearing one of the masks. It, it was See what we need we need people to cosplay as Avenged Sevenfold, like the uh Deathbat Fedora era of Avenged Sevenfold. Like uh Jimmy here, rest in peace. Jimmy here with his Rawlings batting gloves, Brian with his leather fedora. Look at that. Johnny, I don't know what this looks like, some knockoff affliction shirt. Zachy here with his snake bites and soul patch. And the of course not a single finger on any of these gloves to be found. This is the cosplay I want in my life. The mask where like, it's like like the long needle nose. Yeah. He was doing this the thing dick nose. where anytime a Slipknot song would come on, he would take his the needle nose and, and he, he would rub it as if it were a penis on his face. Oh, and I can't think of anything closer to like a literal Slipknot meat riding <sighs> uh, activity that I've seen. Come IRL on, people. With my come on. Eyes. So.
Slipknot, here we are. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Megadeth versus Hate. Hatebreed doesn't have any meat riders other than me. I'm the person, as I've said before, I literally have two Hatebreed tattoos. So if there's such a thing as a Hatebreed meat rider, it's me. But Hatebreed doesn't have meat riders. Megadeth, on the other hand, oh my god. I am baffled by the fact that it is the year 2023. Listen, I'm 44 years old, and I feel like I'm too young to like Megadeth. They were a little bit kind of like cringe when I was 13 and I was 13 in 1991. The fact that there are like 17 year olds who still listen to Megadeth, like who, why, how, what don't like, please do something better with your life than listening to Megadeth. That's my advice. Now this is like the final old head showdown. Um, <laughs> I really cannot think of a single discernible difference between either of these fan bases when it comes to who has more meat riders or like just a difference in their music in general. Yes. Megadeth is 4,700 years old and they've been writing on five pretty good songs <laughs> and 3,500 terrible songs. Yes. Um, so unless you have any other thoughts, I think we it's true. And Dave Mustaine, this is true. Friend. Dave Mustaine is the actual biggest Megadeth meat rider. It's true. Okay. Who's their metal expert friend? Let's see. Who is Which it? Which fan base has the bigger meat riders, Megadeth or Hatebreed? Man, uh, you know what? I would probably have to go Megadeth, all things considered. Well, yeah, obviously. Uh, mainly because they're a lot more mainstream, so the potential for dick riders is just simply higher. Like, okay. I think if you're like a nobody dick rides like metal Hatebreed, like other than me. Metal scene, you know who Hatebreed is, but like there are people who don't know shit about metal who know who Megadeth is. I would have to say all things considered megadeth thank you for your service megadeth as more meat riders than hate breed <laughs> okay turnstile and sleep token what a showdown two very irritating fan bases but you know it's got to be sleep token i mean as far as i'm concerned sleep token wins this whole thing so that's my vote turnstile let's see what they say versus sleep token going back to what we were talking about before turnstile these fans who will meet ride and defend come up with the you know these kind of like uh ideological reasons as to why no it's important that we support turnstile it's important that we push them to the forefront uh -huh. doing yeah they legendary do legendary things that, that's exactly what it is yeah. that they're turning into like an ideological thing it's yeah like, it's true it's like oh we have to support turnstile because they're doing so much for hardcore and this and that, and like, well, do you like their music? Shouldn't that be what's important? It's about the future of the culture. It's about the future of hardcore. Yeah. We, we got to hold this band up. They're, they're letting yeah. a lot of new people in. We did that, 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 I, bro, I do not care. Sounds like a conscious rapper almost. They, they are yes. quite the conscious. Oh my God. Yes, they're the J. Cole of hardcore. It's true. Turnstile is the J. Cole of hardcore or the logic of hardcore. Rappers of the metal scene of hardcore in a way. Yeah. Through, through that like perfect reasoning alone, I'd say Turnstile were probably going to stick uh, with them. No, 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 guys, no. Yeah. And who knows, maybe uh, no. at one point once the Turnstile hype dies uh, down. Guys, uh, listen, I was going to say I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, but I am both mad and disappointed, guys. We're not friends anymore. You've betrayed my trust. As of right now, it's clear that Turnstile has more. Bring me the Horizon versus Lorna Shore. We we did. Uh, I would go with Lorna Shore on this one. I just I don't think Bring Me the Horizon's really a meat rider band. I mean, people definitely like them, but they're just you, you can't be that popular and have meat riders really. You know what I mean? It's sort of like those two things don't go together. So to me, it, it's got to be Lorna Shore. It's been a long time you know, analyzing the background of Lorna Shore and how actually th these are now both two artists that we've confirmed that Lil Uzi Vert is a fan of. Exactly. Lil Uzi Vert on Pink That's true. He likes them both. Song with true. Horizon. And he's also like been to a Lorna Shore show casually as a fan. That's right. The fact that he's gotten the response he has from the Horizon song, it it's like everyone's favorite song on the album. And that that's only fueling the meat riders further. Mm. And, like, exactly. and uh, the all those millennials, they're like, no, see, they're still relevant. And, and like, like they're working with rappers. I mean, cool. it's true. It's true. They are still relevant. I mean, they're they've done collabs uh, largely because they've done so many really good relevant collabs um i feel like these guys are dead to me i feel like this bracket is collapsing my disappointment is immeasurable my day is ruined your bracket is starting to smell like bullshit to me i you know i can't wait to keep me riding them again in the future hopefully they'll they'll be there for it. when we were young 73 you know, more, more fuel for the fire old. yeah exactly yeah. so when we were young 73 okay, okay. Hmm. Sure. Okay, Polyphia and Tool. Now we are coming up on a similar. Mm. Now this is a tough one. Yeah, like like he's saying here, these are kind of similar fans. With Tool, there's this whole other layer of like almost mystical 
meat writing. You know what I mean? Polyphia is just like, oh, they can play really good. I'm an autistic virgin that loves guitars, the end. But with Tool, you get the sort of um, the musician meat writing plus the, you know, DMT conspiracy bros. So I think Tool's got to win this one. A type of meat writer here. So we are dealing with people who are both obsessed with the the technicalities of like music, getting caught up on scales, you know, yeah. time signatures, you know, a bit less on the DMT side when it comes to Polyphia. Right. Because right now we are looking at the same type of meat writer for both these bands, guys who are obsessed with like, oh, they're so technical, they're so smart, da da da. Yeah. You just have to ask yourself, which meat writer is closer to the plutonic form of of the, tool. Of the technical meat rider and this tool the answer is obvious tool. tool yeah yeah we knew that one okay slipknot, versus slipknot megadeth oof this is a tough one i could go either way on this one this is a pick em to me on the one hand with megadeth we've got the people that are still talking about dave mustaine getting kicked out of metallica in 1983 or whenever it was that's some very you know meat riding energy on the other hand Slipknot, like they were talking about, you know, has that sort of um, the cosplay factor. Uh, I, I feel like it could go either way. Megadeth. What our friend was saying on the phone previously, that, that, that's that been weighing on my head very Yeah, Meg okay, you guys have convinced me. You guys convinced me. Maybe maybe it is Megadeth. Let's see what they have to say. Heavily. In a way that, that Slipknot never really has before, if you know what I mean by that, you know? It's a great point, and I agree with him. <laughs> I want to ask Dave to rank his favorite Metallica albums. I would love to watch that interview. That's the only Dave Mustaine interview that I ever want to watch. And just because, I mean, look, look, if we're going back to that argument of Megadeth versus Hatebreed, it was clear that, yeah, Megadeth, just by sheer amount of accessibility, the old head Megadeth meat riding will... Yeah, exactly. Megadeth fans care 500% more about Megadeth than anyone else does. Yeah, like Slipknot has, like on a per capita basis, again, we have to, we have to adjust for size on a per capita basis i think megadeth has a higher percentage of meat riding fans than slipknot does i think simply not cease so when it comes to slipknot versus megadeth it's two different kinds of nostalgia here the slipknot yeah. nostalgia being like mall goth like playing right. like tony hawk y2k exactly right and, and then megadeth back in the day riding my car that i worked on you know hitting yeah. the clubs with the girls with hair who had crazy you know vomit Dropping out of high school, getting two DUIs before I was 23 years old, smoking cigarettes for a decade by the time I'm like out of high school. That's what I think of with Megadeth. I'm 18 years old and I've been smoking for a decade. Stranger, Stranger Things. The Megadeth fans will wear... They're, they're frozen in time. Yeah, they're, they're going to wear yeah. the, like, the little battle vest with the Megadeth right. back patch on it into their grave. And it, Thro fro not Frozen in 1987. Exactly. So Megadeth, you have worse meat Yeah, batters. okay. We're on board with that. Okay. So now we're into the semifinals. Let's see. This is where the, 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 the two like wolves inside of me are fighting right now. So zooming back into Turnstile versus, you know, or AKA Zoomer versus Millennial. Millennials are always going to be more out of touch. Therefore, they're going to be a bit off kilter and the way they realign themselves is through meat right. riding, you know? They right. don't have a good grasp on things, but one thing that they yeah. are good at grasping is the concept of meat riding. Grasping Dave Mustaine's dick. Bands from their childhood. However, we're talking about the here and now, and, and as big as the army of millennials that are nostalgic for, for pop punk, that, that era that they're never going to get back in their life, no matter how hard they wish, no matter how much money they spend on, like, emo night cruises. See, I, I feel like these guys have a lot of um, justified contempt for the elder emo, when we were young, emo night type people. You know, the uh, out-of-touch 32-year-old emo kid trying to recapture 2007 i feel like they've got a lot of contempt for those people and i understand why but i i don't know that i would call those people meat riders to me those are just like that's just what happens when you turn 32 you're not cool anymore i don't think they're meat riders because they're not like trying to like punish you in line and like convert you to being a bring me the horizon fan you know they're just like they have disposable income so i I wouldn't call these people meat writers personally, but I can see why they find them annoying. Turnstile is, I, again, they're, they're militants. Turnstile is- Yeah, turns, exactly. The Turnstile fans are more militant. That's what I would think of as a classic meat writer. Militant, we're the Turnstile army. Turnstile fans, yeah. they, they, they grew up being like, I'm like in the PewDiePie, like bro fist army. So they take right. the army mentality and they've gone from meat writing their favorite YouTubers over to 
you know, hardcore bands now. Exactly. Mixing yeah. with, like, the militancy of, like, you know, like, hardcore in general, yeah. like, with, like, yeah, certain yeah, Because hardcore has always been militant. It's just that right. the militancy has been weaponized and concentrated into meat riding. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird, but, I mean... I mean, hardcore is like that. It's always been a meat riding kind of genre. Yeah, that's where we're taking things. That, that okay, I, I'm on board with this. I won't lie. I'm furious that they eliminated Sleep Token because I really wanted to see Sleep Token and Tool in the finals. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm feeling better about this. The fact that Turnstile made it this far, I'm feeling better about this bracket. Still kind of mad. Yeah, that's the state of hardcore. Tool versus Megadeth, like we established before, this is Chin it's gotta X be Tool. I mean, it's Boomers, easy, really, in a way. The memes about Tool being meat riders, I mean, I mean it's, it's gotta gonna, be Tool. It's carry them very far in this bracket. Who knows? Maybe even further in, into the, the final championship, like the entire yeah. cross genre music uh, championship bracket that, that's coming up. Tool fans are at the very least they're aware of the fact that like their culture has true. been memefied a bit with yeah, Megadeth. They are somewhat self-aware. Still on their Facebook feed, reposting <laughs> memes. Yes, but they're wrong about this though. If they think Megadeth fans are like the thin blue line, you know, five finger death punch kind of people, they're not that. Like Megadeth fans are almost more like um, deep state conspiracy type people, you know, more, more of like a, you know, Jeffrey Epstein, adrenochrome type people, I think. They're definitely not patriots. I mean, every Megadeth song is about how awful and corrupt the government is. So I, I, I would not characterize them that way. About patriotism, thin blue line. But at the same Death time, I should be like on the here. Tool it's true. fans are so... The fact that the Tool fans are self-aware kind of makes it worse. The fact that they are yeah. self-aware about their meat riding... You know, you have two choices at that point. You can either step outside of your own body and, and mm -hmm. either reject it or lean further into it. Yeah, the Alex Jones fans, exactly. Megadeth is like Alex Jones metal. It's not, like, patriotic. They all lean further into it, so I'm going to go with Tool here. Yeah. Yeah. Really, it's almost like, do you want wow. a uh, uh, a Bud Light or do you want like a craft beer here? <laughs> do you want a Bud Light or a craft beer? It's a good way to put it. Okay, now this is a really interesting. Um, sh I mean, you got to give it to Tool at the end of the day, but I think the fact that Turnstile even made it to the finals says a lot. But I mean, you got to give it to Tool. I'm on board with this. I mean, it really says a lot that Turnstile made it this far. This is really hard. Turnstile versus Tool, who has the biggest meat riders. Well, look, I'll say this. Look, it's a clear defined thing what the turnstile meat yeah. riders are, are like. When it comes to the new generation of Tool fans, honestly, for many of them, I've seen them pick right back up off of where the Gen Xers left off. Hmm. Me meaning a lot of the new gens I've seen go right into that culture of, you know, like I love doing like smoking weed. Like there's a lot of like new gen stoners who love Tool. A lot of like DMT people, obviously. Yeah. They love the complexity of it. They love like the, the, the intensity of it, much like the Gen Xers did. Again, comparing it to the turnstile and the meat riding that you have with turnstile, like it's like this militant thing. It's just like very intense. I mean, the turnstile meat riding is super irritating, but it's not even in the same universe as Tool. Let's be real. Hence, well, like, well, hardcore I'll, meat say, riding. I'll say this. The, the way you talk about how new gens, the new generation of Tool fans have picked up where, where Gen X left off, you know, it, it's kind of like that saying, the, the reason why I can why I can meat ride so far is because we stand on on the on the shoulders of giants. Exactly. We stand on the shoulders of the of the giant meat riders before us. That's pretty much what's going on with Tool right now. And I feel yeah. like the fact that you have multiple generations right. of meat riding. But it's true of Turnstile too. Not maybe in the same way, but there's the Gen Z Turnstile meat riders. And then there's the, you know, millennial or even Gen X Turnstile meat riders too. So I think that there are elements of multi-generational riding in both of these. You have that much legacy to the meat riding versus Turnstile or so... I mean, yeah, they've been making music for 10, 15 years, but I mean, in terms of their new wave of popularity, been around for such a short amount yeah. of time compared to Tool. Um, I, I think we have our answer. Ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Congratulations to Tool. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, that's like, uh, you know, the New York Yankees or uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov are in a bracket. It's like, well, I mean, come on. Khabib, 90% chance that Khabib's going to win. But if somebody else even makes it to the finals with him, that's an accomplishment. So I say hats off to the boys in Turnstile for having one of the most irritating fandoms in music such that only Tool fans could defeat you, could dethrone you from the titles of biggest meat writers in metal. Hats off. Well done. 
you have the craziest meat riders in the entire metal genre. We're riding the meat. We'll be seeing you in the championship. Bracket. Yeah, that's right. A little rough in the middle, but we ended strong. And listen, people, what matters is uh, you got to finish strong. Doesn't matter how you start. Doesn't matter how the second quarter is going. What matters is the score on the board at the end of the game. And uh, in this game, Tool came out on top. Make sure you check out the boys at uh, Neopunk FM. Some of the best content in the game. Give them a sub if you haven't.